welcome back to my channel and for today's video we're gonna talk about how i almost got hiv no we're gonna talk about the time when i got a needle stick injury i want it to be dramatic so y'all can watch the video but anyways everybody knows that i'm a registered nurse in jamaica and my job is a pretty serious job but it got very real on this particular day last year when I got a needle stick and I'm gonna tell you what happened I'm gonna tell you how I managed the needle stick and I'm gonna tell you um, the side effects of the medication that I took all right so it was on this particular day when I was assigned in the emergency emergency area so there was a very critical patient there so I wanted to check his random blood glucose level right but the thing is that he was a bit confused because he had a head injury so because he had an, a head injury it was it caused him to be very confused so I, I'm there trying to stick his finger and then it's like I got I sticked him but as I'm going there to squeeze the finger nothing came up so my colleague said, didn't I get nothing? So I said, I not get nothing, you know? So I knew I had to stick him again because I really wanted to know what his sugar was because he's confused, he's not eating. So what if he, what if he goes hypo on us, right? So that was my concern. I'm always like that. Anytime a man tell me if he check something, it needs to be checked because that's the type of intuition I have as a nurse. Like anytime a man tell me, Smith, check this or check that, it's always... Um, something that's off with the patient or based on my assessment like what I can look at somebody and say okay probably something is off right so I'm gonna stick it again and finally the blood come up but as soon as I stuck him his hand flicked up and then the needle went right on my middle finger I remember so vividly so as soon as he stopped me as soon as the needle stopped me i turned to my colleague and i said needle stick and she said run one of the pipes i'm gonna run go out the pipe um let the water run on my finger for a bit it was bleeding of course so i know that i had to go to the staff clinic in order to sort out the issue so right then and there everything started running through my mind what if the patient was positive it was a hiv test done for the patient my last hiv test was um probably like six months prior and i know it was negative because i'm always doing a little bit of checkup at work because you know yeah but um i did the checkup and i did the hiv test it was negative so i have to do a hiv test on that day so i went to the staff clinic well i told my supervisor first and then i went to the staff clinic and they told me what to do so after i went to the staff clinic she said, I know that it might be a bit frightening for you now, but we have to do a blood test. So she did a whole workup. She did a CBC on me, which is complete blood count. She also did some other tests for like hepatitis B. She did a hep screen on me. Um, but I was lucky enough because I was doing the hep B series. So I had been vaccinated twice out of the three part series. So I had one left. So I was a bit not 100% worried about the hep B, but I was so more worried about the HIV test and the HIV status of the patient because I'm like, what if the patient has HIV? Anyways, um, I the, the doctor took off the sample for the HIV and the hep screen and brought it to the lab and the doctor also gave me a prescription to fill with post-exposure prophylaxis and what that really is it's self-explanatory post-exposure prophylaxis so it's a prophylactic measure in order for me not to contract the disease if i didn't have it before right so in all this time i'm worrying everything is running through my mind i'm like what if this patient was promiscuous what if 
I don't know. It's just like every single scenario of me having the disease is running through my mind. What if I have it and I don't know? It's like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain because it was last year. So, then a doc, I, I was telling a doctor what happened to me and she was like, what if you have it? You know, you work in healthcare. You could have got stuck and you didn't know that you got it from somebody or whatever, whatever. What if you had an open wound? And it's like, it's a different type of worry that goes to your mind, especially when you feel like what could have happened, right? So, at that point in time, me start worrying, me, me start fret. Mark you, I dropped off the prescription, went back to my supervisor to drop off um, sick leave because the doctor was saying that when you start taking the medication, you're going to get this unforgiving diarrhea and nausea. So, you need to take um, two different medications, gravel and pantecta, along with um, the PEP, the post-exposure prophylaxis. So, that's what I'll be calling it. So, I was there, like, so worried. Um, tried to go back to work. It wasn't working out. So, the supervisor was like, if you want to go home, you can go home. Because I can see that you can't function. Like, my mind was literally so far, I couldn't even focus on what I was doing. And y'all know I was in the emergency area. So, I may have a full capacity for the in there. So, because of course, you have to think quick and all of that. Anyway, so, basically, I went back to the pharmacy. And it's like, okay, I'm, I'm expecting that the pharmacist is going to explain everything to me. The pharmacist, look, the pharmacist looked at me like I had HIV. And I was like, damn. I mean, y'all don't think that people get needle sticks at least give an explanation of how to take the medication. Although I'm like um, a healthcare provider, I know like most of the medications that I was taking because FYI, if you're not a healthcare professional, the pros the PEP is actually antiretroviral medication. So, the treatment at the pharmacies, I was I, I felt some type of way. I felt ashamed because I know it's post exposure prophylaxis. But at the end of the day, you know, after the BF, so like I'm me of it. Then when I, when I, I was expecting like an explanation and when I looked at her, she was like, that's it. And then she gave me a look and I was like, really? Like, I don't have HIV. I got a needle stick in, a, in my mind. And I was like, okay. So since she's behaving like this, if I really do have it, I'm going to feel like an outcast because that delicate vibe that what she give me, me did feel shame. Like, me did feel like me have the disease and a promiscuous, me did promiscuous, me, me get it. Like, I don't know. I don't know. When I get patients with, with it, I really don't look down on them because I'm like, anything could have happened that could have resulted in you having it. Uh, uh, a cheating partner could have caused it. So many things could have happened. Dirty tattoo needles. Um, piercing your ears somewhere where they use dirty stuff or things that they use on somebody else to pierce your ears like there are so many different scenarios that's why I said I'm not getting any more piercings because this one time I went to do a piercing and the guy used the same gloves that he used on the other person on somebody else and I was like no like if this is how they're gonna do piercings then you can catch it and you don't know like also when i go to the hairdresser and they use the same comb on somebody else that i use on me and i don't wash it like that set me off like certain things tick me off because i'm aware and i know that if you use a comb and part somebody here and it cut them and you use it in my ear me can't get it so because it's exposure to blood anyways a part that's a part of my little paranoia <laughs> i'm very paranoid and i feel like people should be that paranoid as i am but anyways so i'm getting medication and everything and i went home took the first dose and took the gravel took the pantecta and if you don't know what gravel and pantecta is gravel is like um an antiemetic so basically that stops you from feeling nauseous and it works in the vomit center of the the brain to stop you from vomiting because the medication can make you nauseous and it can make you feel like you want to vomit so you will vomit the pantexa protects the lining of the stomach so you know the, the medication is really harsh the pep is really harsh on the stomach so you want to protect the lining so you don't get ulcers and stuff like that but yeah i took my first dose and trust me I felt so nauseous I went to sleep right away so basically I think I got a sick leave for 
a week or two something like that and during the interim of me at home I'm supposed to go back to the hospital to get my HIV results and also I would need to know the status of the patient in order to know if I'm a high-risk patient well I was depend on, on on the form it said low risk the doctor determined me as low risk because I had on gloves and it was a very small needle but if the patient had it now in my mind it no matter what was on the, the paper I'm a high risk patient I don't care what it says because if the patient has it there's a high chance that I could have contracted it with the needle stick but anywho so when I went back to the hospital in order to get the results of course I was negative but everybody knows that with HIV there's a window period of six months where the, the, the disease will not show up in the blood at that point I was kind of relieved but at the end of the day I need to know what uh, about the patient right so I went back to the area that I was working to and only to find out that the patient wasn't there however the doctor that was caring for the patient or seeing that patient he um said that the patient left but I was like where are the results because I need to know in order to know what to do next if I'm supposed to continue taking the ARVs which I should because as I said there's a window period of six months where in which it could have not shown on the test that he should have done anyways the doctor said that the sample was not taken on admission but since it is that I got a needle stick he's gonna try and sort it out for me so I think the doctor said that it would come back in the next two days so the doctor said give me your number real quick and I will text you if the patient has it or not and I was like okay cool so I stopped worrying about it for a while next two days come I texted the doctor she said she didn't get the results and I was like okay that's fine but as soon as you get it you let me know because I'm worrying and I really don't want to take finish taking the ARVs I'm gonna be honest with you I didn't want to take it because it's it made me feel bad and all I would do in the days was sleep and I really can't bother with that anyways um so we did not worry one week pass got my negative result um between the first week and like say about wednesday the doctor texted me and said that the patient was negative and at that point in time i had to stop taking the arbs because me right then and there myself a dirt, a dirt it cannot be that every day i go take the medication here and it make me feel so like i was literally not having it like the medication made me feel like my body I go through some real I don't know how to describe it like my body didn't feel right like you know when your feet you just feel weak I know I know how the patients feel when they actually have to take it which is why some of them actually don't take their ARBs I really feel bad like I couldn't eat much I had to eat a small amount of food because every good thing I get upset feel bad like it wasn't a good feeling taking taking those medications so as soon as i got his results i got the patient's results um i like literally just had to stop taking it but anyways so <laughs> so after the first result i had to take one um i think at six months I took that result it was negative then after the six months I had to take one another six months after because of course the window period so I took the last one I think in November I was like so scared like when 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 the doctor took off the sample I was like doc how fast you think me go get it and the doctor said um probably in in two days time he said he's gonna put urgent and me say yes doc put urgent panic because me really need to know that it's and me are fretting on my heart they beat fast me don't know what for do like it's like this are the judgment time like this are judgment now because even if you never pick up in the first half or the second half i yes for me i'm gonna know if me really have it or not like <laughs> guys really feel like me have hiv like <laughs> This is so weird like and i'm not i'm not the type of person to like be doing stuff so you know you know that i'm like 
I don't know. 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 But anyways, by the, way, by the way, guys, I'm at the car wash. So that's why you see me, you know, taking my time to creep up and so on. But anyways, so I said, this is the judgment. No, this is the judgment. <laughs> so right then and there, um, took off the sample, brought it to the lab. I was like, can you give me back this result in the evening? Because I'm really anxious. I really want to know because I got a needle stick and I da, da, da. The guy was like, okay, no problem. I'll I'll try to get it back as soon as possible. But we close and so and so time. So what time will you be able to come back? When the man done promised me and everything and my walk off. And on the back of my mind, I was like, I don't trust this guy. Because I don't feel like I'm going to get it back in time. Because normally I have to wait like two days to get it back. So when I went back in the evening, of course, it wasn't ready. So he told me to come back tomorrow. Tomorrow I was off. I was off for like four days consecutively. So when I know if it had four days, then I fret. For the second day, I did have to get up out of my bed and go out work, even though I was off in order to get the results because I wasn't waiting another day. The guilt, not the guilt, the worry was eating me alive, literally eating me alive. I didn't know what to do i just had to find out whether or not i had it because been on a picnic yet when i had a husband yet oh if i have hiv without actually doing the deed <laughs> but anyways guys pardon my dry mode i knew i should have put on um lip balm before i come out i don't know why i didn't do it but anyway so went there for my results and found out that hey it's negative and right then and there i stopped for it but still like, i'm still gonna do my every six months check because of course tests do have false positives but after that test i my mind was completely at ease like the, the, the test that I did near to the ending of the year that one was really nerve-wracking because of course if it was there I would have it would have shown up on the test but trust me like it was the worst time in my nursing career and I've been a nurse two years now big up me yes I've been a nurse two years and in after my first year of being a nurse that's when I got a needle stick I made it a boss on a grin I tell people I never get needle stick yet I mean I show off and I may mean, say yeah girl never get needle stick yet I get a radam yeah right I get a radam because you know they always say in your nursing in your nursing journey at least once you get a needle stick and trust me the medication is unforgiving so you need to be extra extra careful when you're dealing with needles so that is the end of the story time of how i got my first needle stick as a nurse nothing to smile about but it's just the fact that i can laugh about it now <laughs> and the whole experience i'm so paranoid i'm so dramatic in everything that i do if you meet me in person you would know i'm so dramatic like my dramatic to the point where the man could have seen the fright on my face when me get back the result. I say, me, I'll text my friend. I'm say, girl, me go do the test. No, do, 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 do. people, <laughs> I'm so dramatic. But anywho, um, that's where we're gonna end it for today. Continue watching my channel, guys. Thanks for the support. Ensure that you remember that we're having a giveaway at the end of this month. Bye. Oh